But you love it, though. You look like Zorro. <laughs> Something like yeah. Zorro would wear. You dig this tie? That's an elephant hair tie. <laughs> you did a whole elephant imp just to get a tie? <laughs> Can I tell you? Anyway, it's kind of cute. <laughs> Was it bad standing outside today? You, you should... We're having a heat wave in Los Angeles. Rather unusual yeah. for L.A. this time of year. I saw a car in a parking lot, one of those Garfields stuck to the window. Yeah. Turned out to be a real cat. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, don't write me cat lovers. Well, how dare you say that about our, our little kitty cats? Uh, well, let's find out what's going on in the news. Um, the big thing I read in the papers is about uh, Bush is in kind of in a bind. We have about a $50 million debt, I guess, to meet Graham Rudman. And Bush, they say, is now considering new taxes. Mm. Yeah, I, I think we missed the fine print. I think we missed the fine print while we were reading his lips. <laughs> uh, yeah. No new taxes. Bush may be backing off on his position on taxes, but thank God he's still hanging tough against broccoli. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing. You know what the Republicans are now saying? They're saying that Bush's campaign promise of no new taxes was only meant for one year. <laughs> and the vice president is kind of nervous because Bush also said, read my lips, Dan, you're on the ticket in 92. That's what Bush said. <laughs> Actually, uh, actually, Bush, remember when he was campaigning for president and he made that statement, no new taxes? Bush now is getting off that position. He said what he really said was, no new Texans. <laughs> Did you go see Madonna once? Didn't she do a concert here? I didn't see her. Yeah, how many of you saw Madonna in concert? Yeah, what? <laughs> ah! Madonna fever is spreading across the country. I didn't see the show, but is it a little bit suggestive? I saw some clips on cable TV, and wow. Well, shows were not that risque, right? At least when I was that young. The wildest thing I ever saw at a conference, I can, at a concert, I can still remember to this day, was seeing the Mills Brothers singing without their cummerbunds. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we are in, uh, television is not what we call the uh, sweeps month. You know what that is? All the stations put on programming, hoping to attract viewers, and some of it is kind of tawdry. For example, a local station, it's a CBS station here. You know what they're doing? They're sending a reporter out, and they're doing a thing called Search for Sleaze. <laughs> I'm not making it up. They're actually sending out a reporter to look <laughs> for sleaze. Now... <laughs> I mean, sending out a local reporter to look for sleaze is like sending out an arsonist to look for a fire. I mean, you don't... <laughs> Something like that. Uh, okay. Now, here's an item I don't quite understand. It was in all the papers, rather controversial. Have you heard about what the Navy is planning to use dolphins for? Yes, they're mounting guns on the noses of dolphins. Uh, why don't they leave the poor dolphins alone? Enough is enough already. The Libyan Navy, I understand, has got a similar top-secret project. They armed a flounder with an air rifle. <laughs> not quite the same. Uh, but it must be true because... <laughs> today, I understand, a dolphin took a shot at a motors that tried to cut him off near the Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. That is, that's not from the heart. I can tell the difference. <laughs> apparently, they've been testing them quietly for over a year. Did you know that? No. Wherever Bush goes, apparently two Secret Service dolphins <laughs> with sunglasses follow his boat. You'll see when they come up, they've got a little, and they've got a little walkie-talkie. <laughs> Meanwhile, overseas, sometimes when it's not going good in this country, I just go across the pond and see, <laughs> see if there are any jokes in the old country. Uh... You're all familiar with the... Uh, Moscow now has McDonald's. Yeah. You're, they also have Baskin and Robbins. Yeah. In the paper this week, they are also getting gambling casinos. A company in Nevada is opening four casinos in the Soviet Union near the Black Sea. Now, the Russians, you know, 
They're not quite up to speed on these things. They don't work the same way casinos here work. In, in Russia, all the chips are the same color. <laughs> and after you lose, they decide how much you bet. <laughs> And this, this was a little item in the Wall Street Journal, maybe you saw it, maybe it was on the news. Albania has made a deal with AT&T for the first time. They're going to have phone service directly to the United States. Boy! <laughs> Exciting news now. Somebody else to drag me out of the bathtub, right? <laughs> Albania's a nice country, but you know, they're not up to speed either. And they only have two people there with phones. Brad and Vlad. <laughs> and Vlad's answering me and says, Hi, Vlad, this is Vlad. I'm not in right now. And a third person, I understand, a third person applied for a, for a, a phone. Now, and Brad and Vlad said, Oh, great, now we've got to get call answering. They're, they're, they're... Okay. Obviously, I should have stayed in Russia. Uh, okay, let's try this one. Moving back into this country and all the way back east. Covering this great land of ours, where there are many senses of humor. Uh, true, the FBI is trying to prove that Mayor, Washington, D.C. Mayor, Marion Barry, used drugs through a new test they called hair analysis. Are you familiar with this? They said they can test your hair for the presence and see if you've been doing drugs. Imagine being convicted on the, convicted on the basis of your hair. More bad news for Pete Rose. <laughs> and today they took a sample of Don King's hair. He was niggity for drugs, but they found a hunter squatting in there with a duck call. Okay. Good night, Mr. Tony Randall, whom we have not seen for quite a while, is with us. One of the young ladies who stars in a very innovative television show called Twin Peaks. His, her name is Laura Flynn Boyle. Laura is with us tonight. And Andy. And a gentleman I have not met. I've only seen a picture of what he is bringing tonight. Andy Kaufman, and he has... I'm talking really big frogs. <laughs> have you seen that story? that he is entering in the Calaveras frog jumping contest. Yeah. And they had a little controversy because he bred these frogs, I believe, in the, in the Cameroon somewhere. And these are, I'm talking, big frogs. <laughs> right, here, right here on our stage, big frogs. Uh, I guess that's about it, and... Don't we have a visitor? Oh, we have a visitor. A visitor from the from east. From the east. My yes. goodness, what a lucky time you are. <laughs> we have not seen in a long time. The famous visitor from the East. The all-knowing, all-telling, all-ambitioned. Famous seer, sage, soothsayer, and former driver for Miss Daisy, Karnak the Magnificent. Nice to see you again. Thank you. I hold in my hand the envelopes. A child of four could see. These envelopes are hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar in Funkin' Wagnall's porch since noon today. Mm -hmm. No one knows the contents of these envelopes. But you, in your mystical and borderline divine way, will ascertain the answer, having never before heard the question. Thank you, Rover. Yes, sir. <laughs> Envelope number one. Hermetically sealed. Must have absolute silence. Oftentimes, Karnak gets that. <laughs> Should have been call forwarding, not call answering. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
The answer to this question, sealed in here, is milk and honey. Milk and honey. What will Michael Milken be hearing a lot of in jail? <laughs> Over the lips and through the gums. Over the lips and through the gums. What's the worst place to attach your suspenders? <laughs> Arnak headed right into Pakistani porta potty. <laughs> Ding dong dell, pussies in the well. <laughs> what won the grand prize this week on America's funniest home videos? Freddie explaining it to Peter. <laughs> he understands. He understands. Where Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> he understands. We have uh, several more to go. Uh, <laughs> to hell in a handbasket. Where's the next place Ernest should go? Hair trigger. Hair trigger. What do Germans call Roy Rogers' horse? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Little hand is on the seven. Describe an evening at Snow White's house. C'est la vie. La vie. <laughs> the infinity. The infinity. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Where does the needle stop on Dom DeLuise's bathroom scale? Buttercup. <laughs> Buttercup. <laughs> Name something worn by an athletic cow. <laughs> Shell game. <laughs> what do you call mutant ninja turtle foreplay? I hold in my hand the last envelope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 a road, a chicken, and an SNL president. Name something that should be tarred, something that should be feathered, and something that should be tarred and feathered.
Well, I, uh, <laughs> this gentleman has been the uh, center of a rather heated controversy uh, for some time. His frogs will compete at the celebrated Calaveras County Fair and Jumping Frog Jubilee next week. Didn't Mark Twain write a story about yes. Calaveras County? He's from Seattle, Washington. Would you welcome Andy Kaufman? Good God. <laughs> that looks like a Mattel toy or something. I mean, that's a real frog. Yes, it is. This is Herky. Herky? Yeah, that's what we call him. This is Herky. Wow. And here, Herky's an eight and a half pound Goliath frog. What, you, what kind of a frog? Uh, Goliath frog. Goliath, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what you mean. <laughs> is it all right to hold him like that? He oh, seems sure. comfortable. That's how, that's how you hold the frog. With this and what like does, that, what we does... support his weight. Huh? Like we support yeah. his weight like this. And they're all different colors. Some of them are yellow, and some of them are white, and some of them are black. They're all different. That is amazing. I've, I've never seen them. Like, I've seen pictures of it. But it, so you're sitting right here. It's also amazing to be out here with you. Yeah, well. <laughs> what's the con what's this controversy all about? This frog well, is because it's not raised in this country. Is that basically well, they, what it is? Well, they think they're my frogs are too big, but. Um, oh, is there restrictions <laughs> on what size frog? Well, no. Can? The only rules of this contest is that the frog be four inches and that it be a frog. Well, it certainly uh, is four inches, a, and it's a frog. And it's a frog, and it's certainly over... How long but is that frog altogether? This frog, well, the biggest ones that we have are like this. They're about three feet long. <laughs> and they have, they have never, ever been seen in any zoo anywhere in the world, ever. Right. And I, I lived in Cameroon for nine years, right. and I saw one jump across the river. I knew about Calaveras. Yeah. And in my mind, I said, Calaveras, here I hey, you come. Got a, you got a winner and, here. And... Uh, <laughs> And, it, and it's my dream is close to becoming a reality. And so why the controversy? Why didn't they want you to enter these frogs? Or some First people of all, they said didn't. that my frog would jump out into the audience and critically injure some of the spectators. <laughs> then they said that my frog would turn around and gobble up the competitors. Well, let's talk about that. Is that possible? And the, my frogs are very shy and timid. They, yeah. would, they would never turn around in front of thousands of people in the middle of the day and eat, and eat frog. another frog. It would never, ever happen. Well, now, what, what does a herky eat? Well, frogs are opportunistic. They'll eat anything that walks by them in the, in the night in the right circumstances. But what we feed them are mice and crickets and goldfish and crayfish. We try to vary their diet. You ought to send these uh, frogs to Nevada. Aren't they having trouble up there with an uh, infestation of what they call Mormon crickets? Have you read about that? <laughs> no. Yes. They're, they're huge, about two inches yeah, long. That would right. be... They would do a good job with them. I'm sure. yeah. yeah. So they finally relented and say it was all right? Yes. Well, what they're doing is they have a, a jumping pad, if you, if you look at this. And if, if you would, Johnny, you'd like to hold it. Not really. I, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you just hold them like this. Just, just hold them right behind there like that. Right. Hold them tight right in there so you don't drop them. There you go. <laughs> this frog is disqualified. <laughs> Um, Apparently, I just didn't have the right grip on well, him. I, I didn't did, want to. I didn't want to. Maybe I grabbed him too tight. No, wow. we did fun. Somebody grabbed me there. I would do that also. I'm sorry about the. Oh, that's all right. No, don't worry about that. Um, this the, will come out of your check the, tonight. But, <laughs> But the thing is, is what they're, what they're saying is that yeah. they have a starting pad, which is eight inches in diameter. Right. And what they're saying is that I can jump my frogs that fit in the starting pad. So I do have some small ones that do. I they see. said the large ones, they want me to jump every day for a demonstration jump to see with Guinness World Book of Records to measure the world's longest jump of a frog. Right. But as you can see, my biggest frogs, they don't really fit Don't in. fit on there, not you too know, much. Even if we push them in, they still don't fit. So, so... Actually, what Calaveras would like me to do is jump my smallest frogs against uh, their frogs. And you don't want to do that, of course. Well, I'm, I, in the, you know, for fair play and all that yeah. sort of thing. Somebody else says they were worried that these frogs would get loose in this country or something, but I understand that they don't breed in this country. Well, they, these frogs die in temperature. They're from the equator, so they die in temperatures below 40 degrees. And oh, they lay their eggs on a plant which is only found in Africa and is not uh, found anywhere here. So they could... They're not such a thing as frog steroids, are there? <laughs> no. People, people always, Nothing personal. No, no. People always ask me... you were boosting the frog. People always ask me if I did that. And yeah. If I do that. And, and, and no, they're, they're just the largest frogs in the world. They were first discovered by the early French explorers in, uh, uh, in the late... 18th century. Yeah. But they had never been in any zoo or ever been kept alive ever before. And uh, 
I understand and what we're going to do tonight. We're going to uh, jump the frog. What? I think we should do the frog off after this. All right. It's a jump off. The jump <laughs> Not a frog off, a jump off. I, I brought... <laughs> should have been a call, a call forwarding also no, should have been. <laughs> I understand you brought me a regular frog. Yes, uh, I, that is, I caught uh, it at Calavera. So, so actually, it's a very big bullfrog. Okay, let's do this a commercial first, and then we'll come back and see how this turkey uh, okay. does against, uh, against the, the one I've got. Okay, stay where you are. We'll be right back, folks. Okay, folks, here we are at the frog meet. Okay, I'm the good. Obviously, we're in front of somebody's home here. Now, you've got Herky, and uh, you brought me a frog that... Well, uh, I brought you a frog that we caught at Calaveras County. It's a big bullfrog. Okay. Can I give it to you? Sure. Okay. Right. This is that big bullfrog. It's the first time we've met, folks, so who knows? This is the one you'll be doing. Well, I mean, good Lord, this is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> this is nothing. Although he does look a little like Jim Baker. And this is the one I'll be jumping. <laughs> Does this seem fair, folks? <laughs> now, what, is, what are the rules? We set now, the frog Now, what we here. do is we set the frog down, and it's the best of three jumps, from the beginning of the first jump to the end of the third jump. So if you want to put when your... you say the best of three jump, they get one jump? One, two, three. Or three hops. And then we measure that distance, and whoever goes the furthest distance in three jumps in the three jumps. wins the contest. All right, is there anything... You, you cannot touch the frog once we put well, it down? Well, you can when it's on the, on the starting pad, but you can't touch it once it makes the first jump. But you can encourage the frog? Absolutely. All right. And here's what we're going to do. Now you encourage your frog? I have the slightest <laughs> idea. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> do what, you might add. Okay, well, I guess we'll do it on three. One, two, three. Go, baby. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. Obviously, I won. He jumped somewhere out of the studio. I, I think he's behind the box over there. Anyway, this is fascinating. Good luck up in Calaveras thank County. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank Andy you for having what? Me. Okay, one more time. Right. Okay. Was he doing something? He was hiding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just there. I mean. Well, uh, yeah, he did something. Well, sure. Oh, when, when this guy does something, it's really something. Yeah. Okay. One more time. Okay. Here we All go. All right. Okay. Ha! Oh! since we've seen my, my next guest. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. Tony will be appearing on a night of 100 stars. Do we have the list of the other 99? We might read. No, I don't post them. <laughs> it's a three-hour special. That's way too long. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's way too long. Oh, it's on this network. Oh, that's oh it's a, a great special. They should do four hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's here's right here on NBC. A big three-hour show. It'll seem just like four. <laughs> That's on May 21st. Uh, would you welcome us, Tony Rand? It has been. Hello? It's been a passel of years, hasn't it? Since we've been together? Just almost. I don't yeah. know what a passel is. It's a Midwest term. A passel of years. Passel is a little pass in a mountain. It's a, a passel. passel. I thought that was a passet. <laughs> you know, I knew, you know what the guy told me who was out here, Mr. Kaufman, a moment ago? He says, I met Mr. Randall backstage, and he knows about frogs. And I said, that does not surprise me. Because you have a vast knowledge or a working knowledge of a lot of different subjects, don't you? Seriously. My knowledge of frogs is mainly culinary. Ah. Yeah. 
You know, a family of five could eat off one of those yes. legs for, yeah, for a long time. A lot of people won't eat frogs. I'm not. That a, I'm I not, will. I'm not a fancier of uh, frogs. frogs. You don't like it? Not really. Mm. I always say it tastes like chicken, right? It's always like people say. And chicken's better. Is I that think it? so. So I eat chicken. Yeah. If yeah. I want something that tastes like chicken, why should I eat a frog? <laughs> Well, isn't that true? Yes. yes. <laughs> if you like chicken, why fool around with a frog? That's right. You, so, have, you have a, you have a, a, a well-taken point there, no well, question about that. Well, I know it's well-taken, it's just a point. Yes. But whether it's well-taken or not well-taken. Uh, Did you watch the commercials on your show? Yes, why? I don't believe you, the way you say it. That's why. I, I watch them if I'm watching the show at home. Ah. I, I don't normally watch them while we're in the studio here. No, you're busy. Uh, <laughs> extremely. Well, your first commercial tonight was the John Deere commercial. Oh, yes. Yeah. For the track, for the uh, track. lawnmower. Yes. And I, I hadn't seen it this year. But uh, the one last year, do you remember it? <laughs> Gosh, I usually uh, get brought up to date on these things. Uh, <laughs> On the John Deere commercial, I just missed it this week. Yeah. What was it last year? You were on the grounds of a convent. You remember that? No. Yes. And the mother superior stood near the camera talking, and in the background, a nun was mowing the lawn in her John Deere machine. And the mother superior said, since we've gotten this new John Deere power mower, uh, Sister uh, Peaceful uh, can can mow the lawn in the time it used to take four men to do it. And then she would, the, the sister in the back would drive up to the Mother Superior and say, Mother Superior, how long before this, how long will this machine last? And the Mother Superior said, No man knows, only he does. <laughs> That was a commercial. You must be a very lonely person. Yeah. You know, to spend your time... To spend your time just logging these memories in your... And that's what you do at night? Just sit and look at commercials and then come up to somebody a year later and say, do you remember the, the John Deere commercial? Yeah. Have, 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 have you you seen... have a very retentive mind, don't you? Uh, only for commercials. Uh, uh, have you seen the Metamucil one? <laughs> Uh, guys. Oh. oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the lady's saying, I want to get caught on the bus. That's right. And, and, well, and hope that it doesn't kick in. Blah! <laughs> yeah, that's the one I meant. She says everything but that. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. The guy says, what? Me take a laxative? Sure. And have it kick in on the bus? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Not a pretty sight. Real Not a pretty guy, sight. Yeah. Imagine on the crowded bus. Oh, oh yes. yes. Well, that's what they're trying to... Yeah. That's yeah. what they're trying to conjure up, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. And then the one of them's a school teacher. Does hope it doesn't happen in class. That's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they pray, advertisers prey on your fears. That's right. That's why they sell products. That's right. Do you use a deodorant at all? Yes. Now, why do you use a deodorant? I don't know because most I don't... Most people... Now, I'm going to just... Most yeah. people do not need to use an underarm deodorant yeah. if you take... Oh, listen to me. If you, if you bathe every day regularly, normally only a few people... Have that problem. That's true. Oh, come on. You see, you've been brainwashed. That's right. You've been brainwashed. Or arm washed. One of the two. That's true. If you bathe and That's take right. normal hygienic procedures, it's not necessary to use a deodorant. And some of us think that uh, people smell better without it. <laughs> the smelly group up here. What do you think? How did we get on this subject anyway? Has it been five years since you've been here? Oh, Lord, no. yes. What? No, no, a couple of years. Five years. Do you know how many times? No, no, no. Somebody five. said it was 1985. That's right. With you. That would be five years. I know you were here one night when I, I was ill. Yes. Off you were here with Jay, I believe. Do you know how many times I've been on? I would guess. Let me take just a good guess. 50. 95. It only, it only seems like 50. <laughs> Is that right? First yep. year, somebody told me it was in 1965. Right. When, was that the year you started? No, we no. started in 62. No, I was on your first year. I think. Okay. I may, I may be wrong. I may no, you're wrong. probably right. No, you know no. these things. No, no. If no. you remember a John Deere commercial from a year ago, <laughs> I'm not going to argue about the first year you were on the show. Got a new word for me tonight? Usually you come in 
You are, a, what is a lover of words? What is, a, is there's a word for that? Who loves vocabulary, who loves words, the meaning of words? Yes, I suppose logophilia, I don't know. Um, Bill Sapphire is, is a great, whatever it is, you know, Bill oh, yes, Sapphire he's writes a marvelous column. Yeah. I found a marvelous word for you. I know, all right. And if you, you might be able to figure it out, but it's a cruel commentary on the human race that this word is obsolete. Well, that's a clue then, obviously, yeah. right? No. Is that the word obsolete? No. Oh, I see. <laughs> Damn. I had that one. What is the word? It's easy to figure out what it means. Embellious. Embellious. Well, the prefix is E-M or I-M? I-M, meaning not. Impossible, not. Not, not bellious. Not bellicose? That's right. Not warlike. Not warlike. And that word is obsolete. Doesn't that hurt? Impellious. Yeah. Yeah. There's well, no I'm... need for that word in our, in our civilization, not warlike. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What else is happening? Could you figure it out? Yes. Well, uh, if, you, was... if you get the prefix, sometimes yes. that helps. Don M. Yes, that's and exactly right. Bellious, it sounds like bellicose. Yes. Or, like or embellic. Embellic or, imbe or embellious. Or embellicose, I suppose. Is there such a word? Umbilicose? Embellicose. No. I see. You couldn't say embellicose. I suppose you could. But you'd be wrong. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't matter since it's sounds obsolete. Like but it would be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Too far back. You ask me what's... <laughs> Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. You never know. You never change. You know, you are remarkable. You always look the same. So do you. You never seem to age. No, I don't. <laughs> you, you really don't age? No. Are you going to pull a Dorian Gray someday and all of a sudden just overnight? No. Yeah. No, I have no such intention whatsoever. Um, you asked me what I'm up to. I thought you went into a seance, sir. Just no. for a moment. Yeah. Well, I knew you were on, uh, uh, playing on Broadway. I was on Broadway, yeah. Not, not in Madam Butterfly. M. Butterfly. M. Butterfly. Oh, that closed, but that was... I understand you were marvelous. Well, it's not for me to say. <laughs> but... were, you, were you marvelous? <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know. I do know it was the best I've ever been well, in, my, in my whole life. Well, and that's... Uh... Uh, well, well, actors, that does happen. An actor finds a role that just suits him. It just was... But you have, glorious, you've had great success thing. in a lot of mediums. Radio, mm -hmm. motion pictures, mm -hmm. theater, and television. That in itself is uh, remarkable. Yes. Not many people get to work all of those different, what, what is the word I want, media, did, venues. Did you work much in radio? No. I was a disc jockey, but I did not do the kind of stuff you did where you actually appeared on dramas and, and serial yes. shows and that type of thing, playing various characters. No. Yeah. But those days are gone. You don't hear that stuff anymore. Although some of the stations here in California will play from time to time the early radio shows I know in the late 30s and, and we 40s. don't uh, I'm on them and uh, we don't get any royalties there well, I know this now yeah. yeah I was on a show called I Love a Mystery I remember it yeah and that's uh, uh, that's on all the time on these radio stations you get a kick out of listening to them though? no no really? no I didn't I, 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 I never appreciate it I just, you don't live in the past huh? no not a bit but <laughs> in in radio there was a firm in New York named Air Features. Do you remember that name? No, I do not. Well, they had 17 soap operas on. And they used to be written, all, a lot of them, by one couple. What was it? Do you remember their names? That used to write like Irma six... Phillips. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a team. And it... Freddie? Do you remember? Freddie was there when they only had drums. What? <laughs> the only method of communication was you'd hit drums, and Freddie... Well, if you, if you, if you worked... For this firm, you might work on all 17 yeah. of their soap operas. And you run from one studio? One, yes, and they, you could make a good living just from that. But if, a, if any one of their directors didn't like you, then you were fired from all their shows. Oh, that's... Yeah. And they had a director named Martha Atwell. And I'm sure many of my contemporaries will remember her. And she was, she was a difficult and, and frightening woman. Yeah. And uh, so you, you rehearsed for an hour. That's all. Right. And she would sit looking at the clock, and as it ticked to the moment when you started, she'd say, page one. She wouldn't look at you as you came into the studio. If you came in one second after that tick, next day someone else was playing your part. Wow. You were out. And you were a young actor at the time. Yeah. You were, so she terrified people. And I had a friend, Cliff Carpenter, and he, he acted on all these shows. And then it, he was drafted, and within six weeks of being drafted, he was in combat. Uh, that's unusual, but it, right. it, it happened. And he was in the Battle of the Bulge. And he was in a foxhole. 
and it was filling up with water, and enemy, tr enemy tanks were going right over his head. And the sergeant kept yelling, don't fall asleep. And you can, no matter, the fact that war is going on around you, after 24 hours, right. you'll fall asleep. Yeah. And the guy kept yelling, don't fall asleep, but he fell asleep. And he woke up with a screaming nightmare. He dreamed he was late for a Martha Atwell. <laughs> That's a tough lady. <laughs> That's funny. We got a call. We'll be back. Stay where you are. <laughs> I mentioned earlier, this, uh, this next young lady is one of the stars of Twin Peaks, which is a very interesting, intriguing nighttime um, mystery. Some people might call it a soap opera. Would you welcome, please, Laura Flynn Boyle. Laura. <laughs> nice to see you. You were supposed to be with us the other night, and we ran along, so I thank you for, for coming oh, back. Oh, gosh. It's the chance well, of a lifetime. Well, I've seen Twin Peaks a number of times. It's a very interesting, almost bizarre in certain aspects. Uh, You've seen it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. I sure have. You enjoy it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite an experience. It's a nice, large cast. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of fun shooting it. And you, are, you play the, the girlfriend of the girl that was... Yes, done, I play done away Laura with, Palmer's it? best friend. And it all revolves around that, doesn't it? It's a continuing kind of, of drama. Pretty much so, pretty much so. But considering that there's such a large cast, yeah. it varies. It's, I, it's a good show. Yeah, so far so Isn't good. Your, doesn't your season finale just finish or it's coming up? Or? No, we have, I think, three more episodes. Three more? Yeah. I'm right on top of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do people stop you and do that silly thing? Well, you look just like you look on television or you look different than you look on television? Or? I look pretty different from Donna Hayward, yeah. yeah. We look a little bit alike, but um, she dresses differently. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> where'd you start your career? You're only, what, 20 years old? I'm 20. Yeah, where'd you start your acting career? Um, well, I've been wanting to do this since I was about three. I started in Chicago. Right. Yeah. What, in a, a local theater or in television? In local theaters, and then I went to performing arts high school. Yeah. What did you do? We've talked to Tony a lot about what actors or actresses do when they're not working. They always usually hold strange jobs. They're sales clerk, or they work at McDonald's, or they sell door to door, or. Well, I did uh, some waitressing. I worked with um, some people at a place called Ann Sather's, and in Chicago, every year they have the Taste of Chicago. Right. And we used to go and and uh, work at the Taste of Chicago, which is about a hundred thousand people come right. through the weekend, and you serve them food. But I was very fortunate. I'm very close with the owner of the restaurant, right. so I could spill food and trays of, of food and, <laughs> and hang in just there, sort huh? of laugh and say sorry, you know. Well, it's not a bad training ground if you want to be an actress. You get exposed to a lot of I guess different so. kind of people. I guess so. Now, when did you come to Los Angeles, or did you come here first? Uh, no, I came here, uh, I promised my mom that I wouldn't come here until I graduated from high school. Good move. Yes. Would you advise young ladies, you know, always, you, you probably get letters from people, I want to, you know, they told me I was in a school play, I should come to Hollywood and fame and fortune, or New York. You say, stay through high school, at least that, right? Well, I don't know, if I didn't have my mom, I probably would have moved out. Yeah. Right away, you So know. your mother said, don't? Right. Go on, right? Go ahead. All right, so I uh, stayed in Chicago, and then I graduated from high school, and I left the next morning and moved out. <laughs> All by yourself? Well, I moved out by myself, and my mom said that she would come in a few months. Uh -huh. And I, was, I stayed for about three weeks, and I kept calling her and crying on the phone. Mm -hmm. Please come out. So finally, she came out a few weeks later. It's awful tough, tough out to come into this town like this and try to find work, isn't it? Well, um, it's not as tough finding work, but it's, it's tough um, keeping a family and keeping friends. And, yeah. You know, because Hollywood can really offer you a lot of things for a short period of time. You're right. Yeah. Like what? Well, you know, I mean, it's if, if you're a young girl and you're talented and, right. and you're cute, you know. Yeah, you're all of those things. Well, so far. <laughs> but, you know, they're willing to, you know, tell you how great you are and that. And it's nice to have people like your family around who are honest with you. Yeah, can you tell the people uh, who are giving you those kind of flattering accolades that they're not sincere? Producers, people that, you know, say they can get you a job or, yeah. you know. Oh, did you ever do commercials? We were talking about commercials. Uh, yeah, I did, I did a lot of um, print ads, and I did a commercial for Fruit Roll-Ups or something. and, and uh, Fruit Loops? Fruit Roll-Ups. Yeah, and I was out you there. You probably remember that, don't you, Tony? <laughs> Holy man, who would know the commercial fruit roll-ups? But you missed that one, huh? No, no, I, uh... You remember Yes, that? yes, of course. No, you don't. 
I almost bought that. So you did a few print things? Yeah. What was your first uh, television work? Oh, I did a, a miniseries called America. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. Which is pretty amazing because um, I had never done anything, you know, in TV. And then right. uh, they cast me in it and told me to pack up my bags for...